Okay, let's get this skull into GTA, specifically a 5M server. We have a model and it has textures, uh, which means we can pretty much get it into the game, which is fantastic. We want to make sure it doesn't have too many polys. 3.3 thousand is okay. Uh, in my ideal world, every prop has less than a thousand polys. Uh, but considering cars have 300,000, uh, I'm going to say it's okay at this stage. Let's download it. We can go extract it. Oh look, here's a version I've extracted earlier. And let's just pop it in a new folder on the desktop. Should have the source, which will be the FBX file. And we should also have some textures. Now to get this skull ready, we're gonna need uh, some bits and pieces. We're gonna need some software. We're gonna need a few things. So for the textures, we're just going to use paint.net because it's free and it supports the right file type that we need. We're going to use CodeWalker or specifically the RPF Explorer to convert GTA file types to and from the open XML file type. You can get that from the Discord. When you go to the Discord, you'll see they've got a releases channel and down the bottom will be the latest build. Once you extract that, if you have a look, you'll see that there is the RPF Explorer executable. So you can double click on that to use it. I've got a little shortcut set up that I'm gonna be using today, but that's where you can get that. We're also gonna need Blender because that's how we're gonna do all our 3D modeling and texturing, etc. Uh, and we're gonna use a plugin called Solemns, which you can download uh, from their GitHub here. And if you go to the code, you can download the zip. The install instructions are down the bottom here, and it's quite straightforward. To help get the reference size for this skull, let's use a hat. We can use uh, Bledmasters Forge to look through all the in-game props. Uh, and let's pick this hat, which looks fine. Then we're going to go to our RPF Explorer. And we're going to search for that hat. That's the one. And let's export this as a reference file. Make a new folder. Reference. We'll pop that there. So let's look at these two textures. We need to resize them and get them in the correct format. And we're going to use paint to do that. We can open it with paint.net. If I go to resize, I can see that it is 2048 by 2048. I think 1024 by 1024 is better. And then we're going to go save as. We're going to go to direct draw surface or DDS. And we're going to save it as DXT1, which is the default. If you have something that needs transparency, uh, then make sure you use DXT5. Otherwise, I recommend sticking to DXT1. And then let's open up our other normal map as well. We'll also resize that. And we will save it as a DDS as well. Fantastic. So now we can get rid of those PNG. And we get those DDS. We'll open up Blender. So if you need tutorials on Blender, uh, I recommend the Donut uh, tutorials, which you can find on YouTube. Click, shift, click, right click, delete hierarchy, blank slate to begin with. Fantastic. Let's import our skull, which was an FBX. There we 
fantastic. Scrolly, scrolly. Now, how big is this skull compared to a regular GTA object? That is why we have our reference object, because otherwise it's really hard to tell uh, with the units. So we're going to import our reference object as well. And our reference object is a Codewalker XML type. And we put that on our desktop in our video folder in the reference folder. Well, look at that. It turns out, I can click here. We want to put the hat up and down. Um, turns out that it's about the same size. In fact, the scale is slightly oversized, but it's about regular size for um, GTA which is good. So I'm not actually going to rescale it. All right, let's do an oversized one just to show. So if, if I click my uh, skull over here, say we want to make it a bit bigger, we want an uh, uh, oversized skull. We're going to click scale. Let's scale it up. We want a big skull. We want an oversized kind of uh, Halloween skull here so we can make it say that big. Once we're happy with the size, uh, we can get rid of our reference object. We could just hide it, but I'm just going to right click delete hierarchy and let's get rid of it completely. So we've got our skull in and we got it the correct size. Fantastic. Let's have a look at the textures on this skull. Uh, so we can click up here in the viewport shading to show the textures, which haven't loaded properly, which is not surprising. Uh, if we come down, click on the skull and we see we've got the materials here. We can see that the base color it's looking for is skullcolor.png, which doesn't exist anymore. We deleted that. Uh, so we're going to pick a different file for that. We can click down here. We can just make sure if you um, select the type of texture that it's going to be an image texture, which this one already is. And then you can click the folder to actually select the image that you want to use. So here we're going to go to our desktop and we're going to use the color. And it's going to look like this. Base color set. There is also, it's also asking for a roughness here, which we're going to ignore. We just want to set the normal map, which we want to go to the color. And we're going to go and select our normal map here. Fantastic. So we've got the texture set, but it's the wrong type of shader. Uh, it's a generic blender shader. We need it to be a GTA 5 shader which is why we're going to use our lovely Solemns plugin. I can click here, or I can cl click N to toggle this, and down the bottom we have Solemns tools. So uh, in the drawable tools, we can create a shader, and we want a shader that uses the base color and also a normal map, and that shader is called normal. And I'm going to click the skull, and I'm going to convert it to selected which converts it to a GTA normal shader type. Fantastic. Looks better. You can see it's not shiny anymore as well, which is fantastic. Textures are set. Next thing, let's actually turn it into a GTA 5 model. Currently it's just an FBX model, but we need a GTA 5 model type. And we can do that by going to create drawable objects. Just up here. We want to use the name, which is currently skull, which is fine. And we also want to add a collision to that and we can click Create Drawable. Now we can see this hierarchy over here has changed. We have an object inside of which is a collision, which is the mount composite, which has the collision mesh. And then we also have the drawable model, which is the geometry with the shaders. Fantastic. So the only thing we need to do now is just set a few uh, options and a few flags and make sure we're happy with it uh, and paint the vertices as well. And we should be good to go. So let's just start with the properties. Let's just do from the bottom up. If we go into the object properties here, you can see that there is a Solemns dropdown. So for the drawable geometry, there's actually no Solemns options. We can go up and go up. And we can see we've got a random mask if we need it. LODs is high, that's fine. We're gonna move on to the collision. For the bound poly mesh, there's no options. For the geometry, we can see we need to set some collision flags. So these are the flags. These are the things that uh, make sure objects collide with each other and bullets hit things and you know stuff like that. Uh, we can set these really easily using the collision tools. We can click the collision tools. We can go to the flag presets, and there is a default preset. 
we can say apply the flags preset and it ticks all the flags that we need. Fantastic. Keep going up, oh, bound composite. Uh, we're not going to worry about anything there. And then to the root, LOD distance by default is always uh, set to maximum. And that's fine because we, we change that when we place the object. So that should be good to go. The last thing we want to do is paint our vert vertices. Now, vertex color is important for GTA. Um, I will put a link in here to Decobinator's site here. The vertex color channel uh, sets the way objects react to light. So red is the ambient occlusion of the model during night, uh, the red channel. So it goes from 0 to 255. Green is whether an object is self-emissive or whether it glows. So zero means it doesn't glow at all. 255 means it will grow, glow uh, or look like it's in you know bright light, even if it was in uh, nighttime, for example. And then B is moonlight illumination, so how much the object reflects moonlight. You can uh, do a whole lot of stuff with vertex colors. It's uh, very complex if you want to go into it all, but Decobinator has a video there. But let's just use something sensible, not out of control. So we're going to go to our general tools. And we're going to go to our vertex painter. I'm going to click on the skull. Uh, the vertex color. So I want it to be RGB because that's what I know. Noting that in Blender it goes from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255. So what I do for G, we want it to glow but only like very faintly because we don't want it to totally disappear. It is a decoration after all. Uh, so let's go 0 0.1 just so it's got a little bit. Uh, blue I'm happy to keep uh, at 1. And red, let's keep it at one as well. Let's just do that. We get kind of this pink color. That pink color is okay. Uh, it, it should be fine. And we can paint that. And we can see down the bottom here, it says the skull geometry was successfully painted, which is fantastic. So we should have everything set. We should have our vertices painted. So we should now be able to export this skull. Oh, the last thing, sorry. We need to embed the textures as well. So that should be in your drawable tools, in your shader. There's the option to set all textures embedded, which you make sure that all the textures are in the model. You don't have to have an external texture dictionary. So I'm going to click that and it says material and normal textures were set to embedded, which is fantastic. So now we can export it. I'm going to go file. I'm going to export. I'm going to export it as a CodeWalker XML. Go to my desktop, to my video. I like to make a new folder. And my folder is called export. And we're going to export it into there. We get the successful export. So you can see I've got this .ydr.xml. If we open the RPF Explorer, we're going to use that to convert that ydr.xml back into a .ydr. We can open a directory or open a folder in RPF Explorer by going File, Open Folder, and we can open our video folder, which is nice. If we make sure we're in edit mode, we can just click and drag files in, and they're going to automatically convert to the correct file type. So here we have our skull.ydr, it's 855.5 kilobytes. If I double click on it, you can see that it shows up here, which looks good, good start, good start. If I go into here, we can see that we've got the materials, we've got the diffuse and the normal, and it's embedded. And if we go to the options, we can also say show collision meshes, and we can see that it actually has a collision, which is fantastic. Now, the other thing we have to do is make a Y type. So every model needs a Y type file that describes um, the YDR to the game, basically. Thankfully, Solemns can help us with this as well. In the general tools, no, in the archetype definitions, we're going to make a new Y-type. And we're going to call it, what do you reckon? Skull. I'm going to make sure that I've selected the root um, in the hierarchy of the object. And I'm going to click Auto Create from Selected. And you can see it's kind of auto pre-filled all this. And then I'm just going to export the Y-type 
XML, and I'm going to put that into my export folder. We go back in my export folder. I now have the skull.ytype.xml. We can drag that in as well. And if we have a look at that Y type folder, you can see uh, the size of the objects automatically being set. Texture dictionary is embedded, but it's set to skull by default and everything's set there so that now we can actually use this in the game. So we should have our Y type and our YDR. All right, let's go put them in the game and see if they work. And then we have, ignore the pumpkins, uh, one spooky skull. Da, 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 da. And it has a collision. Which means we can't walk through it, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. So there you go. Anything, bring it in. Search far, search wide, find something unique. Uh, you can make it yours. Don't pay someone to do it. You can just go and do it. It is that easy. Now, I do realize I've breezed over a lot of things uh, in the interest of time and simplicity. Uh, for some extra homework for people that are keen, one of those things uh, is flags, particularly for the Y type. I just wanted to point out that Decoinator has a beautiful page on flags, specifically Y type flags, but also all types of flags, which are super, super useful. The other thing is, and I, I spruik this all the time, but if you want to understand a little bit more about how uh, GTA objects work and how everything relates to the graphics and what all the different files are and what they do and why the vertex colors work the way they do and kind of understand how things work a bit more, I really recommend this little graphic study. Uh, it's not too much of a read, uh, just about how GTA graphics are set up and you will find that it correlates beautifully to all the things you do when you make things in Solemns. Uh, so that's just a little, uh, if you'd like to have a look uh, to understand more.